Let's now talk about FM synthesis. Now, if you remember the concept of how to create a vibrato from subtractive synthesis, you will find it very easy to understand FM synthesis. So to create vibrato, we will need the oscillator, which will be affected, and we will need an LFO, which will be assigned to modulate the pitch of the oscillator. This will create the vibrato effect. Now just imagine that instead of the LFO, we use another oscillator, which is identical to the main oscillator. What ends up happening is that we don't hear vibrato as the modulation is happening in the audible range. Like if the main oscillator is 440 hertz, the modulating oscillator is also 440 hertz, which doesn't end up sounding like vibrato, but more like a timbre change. This is FM synthesis. In FM synthesis, the audible oscillator is called the carrier, and the modulating oscillator is called the modulator. Collectively, all FM oscillators are called operators. Now, if we try this vibrato thing in the analog mode in Retrosynth, we can get an idea of what it could sound like. I've set up a simple triangle wave as the carrier. Let's increase the vibrato amount, in other words, the FM amount. I'll set it to two semitones. Now let's change the pitch of the LFO. Right now it's very slow, so it still sounds like vibrato. Once the oscillator reaches the audible range, you will notice that it doesn't sound like vibrato, instead it sounds like a new timbre is being created. Now unfortunately, this LFO is not meant to go higher than 200 Hz, so we can't really get that FM sound. Also in FM, the operators change their pitch with regard to the key pressed, while here it's just fixed at one value. Now in FM synthesis, the relationship between the carrier and the modulator is very important. Generally, integer ratios will create pleasing sounds. That means if the carrier is 100 Hz, the modulator can be 100, 200, 300, etc. There are some other ratios that will also result in pleasing sounds, but for now let's leave it at this. In fact, in Retrosynth, you don't even have to set the ratio. There's a fader called Harmonic, which will let you choose any of the harmonically pleasing ratios. Now if the ratio is not an integer multiple, you end up getting very dissonant sounds. And in Retrosynth, there's a slider called Inharmonic, which lets you choose any of the inharmonic ratios. I think we have come a long way from the earliest FM synth created by Yamaha in the 80s, the DX7, where programming was a nightmare. I believe the DX7 was easier to program compared to some of the earlier models. I couldn't even imagine how hard those models would be to work on. In Retrosynth, this has been simplified a lot, where all the math is taken away and you just focus on creating sounds. Though the drawback is that there will be some inflexibility when it comes to creating very specific sounds and advanced users may not be too excited about having just two operators. Now having said all that, I still feel it's a good balance. If you want the entire FM experience, there are quite a few other options to look into. Anyway, next we look at the controls for the FM mode in Retrosynth.